Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Unity. And today we have kind of a little invocation for peace. And then we're going to go on to sweet by the river, which is a song that I know you all have in your hymnals. So you can join in. Mm -hmm. And everyone needs their wine and victory. The living things and on a Underneath their vine and fig tree shall live in peace and unafraid. And into plowshares turn their swords, nations shall learn war no more. And into plowshares turn their swords, nations shall learn war no more. And everyone neath their vine and fig tree shall live in peace and unafraid. And everyone neath their vine and fig tree shall live in peace and unafraid. And into plowshares turn their swords, nations shall learn war no more. And into plowshares turn their swords, nations shall learn war no more. I've got peace like a river. Peace like a river, I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've got love like a mountain, I've got love like a mountain, I've got love like a mountain. In my soul, I've got love like a mountain. I've got love like a mountain. I've got love like a mountain in my soul. Let's all stand and sing together. I've got joy like a fountain. I've got joy like a fountain. I've got joy like a fountain in my soul. I've got joy like a fountain. I've got joy like a fountain. I've got joy like a fountain in my soul. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river in my soul. Thank you. Well, good morning, everyone. It is so nice to see you here today. We are blessed by your presence here. And we just, let's give Marilyn a round of applause. She's filling in for us. Beautiful, beautiful voice, beautiful song, so appropriate. Well, thank you. I'm today. happy to be here. I'm thank happy you. I could help. Thank you. Um, we have a little housekeeping that we do every Sunday, of course. It's make sure that your cell phone is in the off position. And if you are new and visiting with us for the first time, we have connect cards in the pew. The purpose for that is we want to connect with you. We need a little information from you, such as an email address so that we can send out our uh, weekly email. It comes out on Thursdays now at 2 p.m. There's a place for you to uh, check if you would like to receive text 
from time to time we will be sending out texts. And there's also a place for you to check if you would want to request prayer. Um, and then Reverend Shauna will get with you. So once you have filled this out, if you'll just place it in the offering bag when the offering bag comes around. And then for our announcements. Reverend Shauna's message title today is Thimble or Chalice. Interesting, huh? Thimble or Chalice. I know a little bit what this is about, so good and then yes we like to have fun here from time to time <laughs> so we're going to have a Halloween party and you can wear your Halloween costume next Sunday to church okay yay there's some people that like to do that so we're going to have um, a little contest there'll be some prizes for the best Halloween costume and I believe a prize for the most creative and then we thought well okay we need a little interaction for people that maybe don't like to dress up and there's something for them to do so how about an old-fashioned cakewalk so we're going to do a cake pie walk whatever you want to call it you're going to get a goodie okay and Lisa's going to be in charge of that I'm not going to be here Rennie and I are not going to be here next Sunday so Lisa's in charge of the cakewalk and um, she'll have some hip-hoppy kind of music and stuff like that so that'll be fun and then if we play hard, we have to work hard, right? So on November the 4th is Garden Cleanup Day. So I do have a sign-up sheet out there. I really would like to ha have a good attendance for that because our gardens need attention. So if you would be interested in signing up for that, it's going to be from 10 to noon on November the 4th. That's not next Saturday, but the following Saturday. And then I just thought we would put it out just to remind you that it is coming up that the daylight savings time is going to be changing. It seems like it comes around so quickly. So that's going to be on November the 4th or November the 5th as well. So not next weekend, but the following weekend, it's fall back. So we get that extra hour of sleep. And then just to remind you again one more time that our email addresses have changed and basically what we've done is gone to a .org as opposed to a .com. So you think that's easy to remember but you know habit, you know, you gotta, you gotta hit some different keys to get ORG, you know, so we're .org. So um, just making note of that. And then oftentimes, we don't say thank you enough. So we want to thank all of our volunteers who week after week step up and help us. But I especially today want to thank Louise. Louise ushers, Louise greets, Louise reads the Daily Word, Louise plants flowers in the spring and summer, shares her flowers with us. And any time I call Louise to ask her to fill in, she is always, always most happy to do so and has been doing this for about 10, 10 years. So let's give Louise a round of applause. And so it is now that time in our service when we sort of gather our thoughts in, we relax into our seat, and we know that we're going to begin a beautiful part of our day. And we start each day, each Sunday, with the daily word, which is done all across the world at Unity Churches. And so together we share in this energy. And so I invite Louise up to read the daily word. read this I love it today's word is grace and let us all affirm together I walk in grace and peace today I give thanks for the activity of God in my life that appears as grace 
This divine gift manifests as the beauty of the world and the people in it and as the comforting presence of God within and around me each day. I do not have to do anything to earn grace because it does not result from my attitude or actions. It flows from the infinite love of God within every person and surrounding every circumstance. It is the indwelling presence that sustains me in challenging times and it lifts me in good times. I accept grace with gratitude when I have stumbled along life's path and received unexpected blessings. This boundless love fills my heart with bliss and peace. I live in the presence of infinite love believing each unfolding event in my life is leading me to my highest good. <clears throat> Our scripture reading is from 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. I love Paul. <laughs> my grace is sufficient for you. I walk in grace and peace today. Thank you, God. Amen. And thank you, Louise. I love that idea of grace. So we're going to take that with us into meditation. And the idea of peace. You know, Miss Marilyn started us out today with that idea of the vine and fig tree. And that we can all sit under that vine and fig tree. Our first president, George Washington, used that phrase so many times as he was building a nation, bringing people together working together, saying we can all live together in peace. And so I want us to focus on that image as we go into meditation together, to focus on above us a bower, a vine and a fig tree, and that we sit under it in grace and in peace. So if you're comfortable, I'd like you to take a deep breath in, settle into your seat, relax your shoulders, if you're comfortable, close your eyes and imagine that you are sitting under a beautiful, beautiful vine. And that vine is lovely and bountiful. And that as you sit there under that vine and fig tree, I want you to imagine peace swirling around you like a love loop. And I want you to imagine that that bubble of love, of peace, expands because we know that our world needs peace. We know that our lives need peace. We know our relationships need peace. So imagine that bubble expanding from you. And that as it expands, it touches another, and it touches another until that big bubble of peace expands and covers the entire world. And hold that thought of peace in your mind and we will sit for a few moments of silence together.
And as you breathe in and breathe out, know that peace circles you like a love loop and that you can extend that love out and out and keep extending that love. And so it is.
Ms. Marilyn McCulloch. Let's give her another hand. Thank you so much for that. So I want to tell you, I got the chance to hear that earlier. You know, Marilyn had came up, came up this week. And one of the cool things about that song is that that song came to her. That's her song. That's a song that she wrote because spirit was coming to her. It says we're traveling in and out of time in this cosmic rhyme. Oh, so beautiful. I'm so glad to be here with you guys. I'm glad to be here today with you. Can't figure out whether I'm wearing my boots or my sandals. It's like, what is up, Oklahoma? Come on, what's going on? So we're talking today about how we're going to expand our concept of universal flow. It's an interesting concept. How big is your idea of God? I'm going to move that out of the way. There we go. Before I hit it. How big is your idea of God? Cosmic flow. But first, if you excuse me for just a minute, I'm really thirsty. So hold on, I've got to take a drink. Well, that's not refreshing. It's uh, small. Hold on. That, that wasn't refreshing. So hmm, this is a little bit better. Let's try this one. Hmm. Okay, one drink. So how about this? Okay, hold on. It may take a couple of minutes for me to get through this. Y'all got a minute or two? Hold on a second. Let me try. <laughs> oh, I hope I don't spill it. Oh, my gosh. Okay, there's nothing in it. But, but I want to ask you, look. What do you think is refreshing? My little tiny thimbleful. I know it's not a thimble. It's really an espresso cup. And it's not enough espresso either. One little tiny cup is this. What do you think is more refreshing? Right. What do you think is more refreshing? I need a big drink to refresh my spirit, my soul, um, not a thimble. I need a big bucket. And we're talking today about what is your idea of God? Is it a thimble or is it a big chalice? Thimble or chalice? I love the idea of a chalice of the gods, like the Holy Grail, Right? Uh, anybody remember the Indiana Jones movies where he's going off to try to find the Holy Grail? Yeah, great flick. So that cup was supposedly the cup that Jesus drank from at the Last Supper that he had with his disciples before his resurrection. And yes, before his resurrection, because we focus on life and his rising, not on his death, right? We don't focus on the crucifixion. We focus on the resurrection. Um, Indiana Jones and his dad went on this trip. So they were going off, you know, to fight the forces of destruction, who for some reason always have British accents in those movies. I don't get that. Um, but they're going off to fight forces of destruction, and the Joneses wind up in this cave where the last of the crusaders has been guarding all of these cups. And there are just rows and rows of cups. And in those cups, one of them is the true chalice, the chalice that the king of kings drank from. There are jeweled chalices, fancy things, there are goblets of fire and ice, and Indiana Jones has to stand there and go, oh my gosh, which is the true chalice? So he remembers something, though. He remembers that Jesus was a carpenter. Before he left the family business and went off to be a hippie and commune with fishermen. Jesus was a carpenter. And so Indiana Jones goes, okay, let's find the most beautiful wooden chalice. And that's the chalice that Indiana picks. And he chose correctly. But as, a, as it turns out, Indiana drops the chalice, and the chalice is lost forever, the true chalice that Jesus held in his hands. That's how the movie goes. But my question to you is, is the true chalice gone? It's not. Because you are the chalice. And I am the chalice. We are the cup of God. We are the chalice, the cup of righteousness. We are the vessel to bring forth universal flow. So I ask you again, itty-bitty chalice for God's love to flow or great 
big gulp, 32 ounce <laughs> pitcher, big chalice for God's love to flow. So today we're going to talk about a simple way to expand our concept of universal flow, to expand our knowledge that we are the chalice. So in order to do that, I'm going to ask you a simple question. How big is God? Okay. It sounds kind of childish, actually. It sounds like a question that our, our kiddos would ask after they've had, you know, Sunday with Miss Jessica. How big is God? It's like, how blue is the sky? It's actually, though, a question that philosophers have been asking for millennia when trying to understand God and reaching out for the ends of being an ideal grace. It's like asking, what does the wind look like? <laughs> you can see the effects of the wind. You can't see the wind itself, but you can see the leaves twirling in the wind, right? So what if we say that God is infinity? Okay, that sounds good. Infinity is forever. I can kind of start to deal with that definition. I don't know about you, but it gets us beyond human dimensions of size, you know, space, time. It gets us beyond that. That concept of infinity, however, is, is a, a long time. How long does forever last? It isn't something we can wrap our minds around. So I don't try to catch the wind. I watch the leaves blowing in the wind. Maybe we can think of God as the wind. We're the autumn leaves blowing. God's the cause. We're the effect. Leaves fall, and in the spring they're renewed. We're the leaves falling and renewing lifetime after lifetime. That's an interesting way to look at it. And actually, the question about how big is God could be rephrased in many, many different ways. It could be, how big is the universe? How big are the cosmic forces? How big is spirit? How big is divinity? How big is divine mind? How big is fill in the blank? People have used many, many different words for this concept. You probably have your own way of accessing and understanding that. It's hard to put that idea of infinity into perspective. But as we grow spiritually, our concept of God also grows. But still, I don't try to catch the wind. I just watch the leaves twirling. We exist within the limits of space and time. We walk what seems to be a path from the past to the future. You know, our birth is in the past. Our death is in the future. We live in the now, in this moment, like leaves twirling in the wind. We're told in the Bible that God loves us, cause and effect, that God loves us. We're told that God communicates with us, listens to our prayers, knows our heart, and loves us infinitely. And as we talk about how to expand our consciousness, our concept of divinity from a thimble to a chalice, there's a poem by James Dillett Freeman that says it so beautifully. Freeman was a unity minister, and you already know his work, already, because every Sunday we recite one of his poems. It's the prayer for protection. We do that every Sunday at the end of our service. His poem, I Am There, speaks to us about God, about the issues of how big, how real, how present the divine mind is, God is. Now, Freeman was sometimes referred to as the poet laureate of the moon, <laughs> because his poems were taken to the moon twice. Uh, the prayer for protection that we'll do at the end of the service today was taken to the moon on Apollo 11 in 1969, July, by Buzz Aldrin. And his poem that I'm going to read in just a moment, I Am There, was left on the moon by astronaut James Irwin from Apollo 15. So as we talk about expanding our understanding, expanding our consciousness and our connection to God today, I'd like to invite you to take a moment to relax and listen to this beautiful poem, I Am There. If you feel comfortable and you want to close your eyes, that's cool. Whatever you want to do, just hear these words. I Am There by James Dillett Freeman. Do you need me? I am there. You cannot see me. Yet I'm the light you see by. You cannot hear me, yet I speak through your voice. You cannot feel me, yet I am the power at work in your hands. I am at work, though you do not understand my ways. 
I am at work, though you do not recognize my works. I am not strange visions. I am not mysteries. Only in absolute stillness beyond self can you know me as I am, and then but as a feeling and a faith, yet I am there, yet I hear, yet I answer. When you need me, I am there. Even if you deny me, I am there. Even when you feel most alone, I am there. Even in your fears, I am there. Even in your pain, I am there. I am there when you pray and when you do not pray. I am in you and you are in me. Only in your mind can you feel separate from me. For only in your mind are the mists of yours and mine. Yet only with your mind can you know me and experience me. Empty your heart of empty fears. When you get yourself out of the way, I am there. You can of yourself do nothing, but I can do all. And I am in all. Though you may not see the good, good is there, for I am there. I am there because I have to be, because I am. Only in me does the world have meaning. Only out of me does the world take form. Only because of me does the world go forward. I am the law on which the movement of the stars and the growth of living cells are founded. I am the love that is the law's fulfilling. I am assurance. I am peace. I am oneness. I am the law that you can live by. I am the love that you can cling to. I am your assurance. I am your peace. I am one with you. I am Though you fail to find me, I do not fail you. Though your faith in me is unsure, my faith in you never wavers. Because I know you, because I love you, beloved, I am there. I hope that poem speaks to you as much as it does to me. It's like... Um, a soft blanket, you know, on a winter night. It's like a hot cup of tea when I need one on an autumn afternoon, unless it's 100 degrees outside. Uh, those images of infinity and divine love and constancy are vital for us today as we look at the world around us. We look at the lack of peace. We look at wars. We look at desolation. We look at people hurting. We need that image of the constancy and infinity of God. How do we find balance? How do we expand our consciousness and our image of God? When we think of the infinity of God, that's to think of knowledge and agency without limitation. We're limited by our body and our thoughts, and yet we can go beyond some of these limitations too. The infinite nature of divine mind includes power, knowledge, presence, and ever-expanding existence. Infinite power, omnipotence. That means all abilities to change and create belong to the divine mind. That's how I understand God as the divine mind that connects with me and connects and gives us music and words. Infinite knowledge is omniscience. The divine mind's knowing encompasses all, all secrets of the universe, all secrets of our heart, yours, mine, all of us. 1 John 3.20 says, God is greater than our heart and knows everything. Infinite presence, omnipresence, divine mind is everywhere all at once. That's hard to wrap your mind around sometimes. Psalms 139 says, where shall I go from your spirit? Where could I flee from your presence? Everywhere we are, God is. We'll say that prayer for protection a little later. At infinite and ever-expanding existence, transcendence. Existence before, outside of, during our little experience here on this little blue and brown ball that's floating in the middle of a star field, in the middle of a solar system, in the middle of a universe, ever-expanding. Beyond that divine mind is, and yet all of that power, that beingness, that presence, that ever-expanding infinity is ours because God is cause and we are effect. God is the wind and we are the leaves. God is ab wound, father, mother, we are the child. 
In Freeman's poem that I just shared, God speaks to us and says, I am assurance. I am peace. I am oneness. I'm the law you can live by. I'm the love you can cling to. I am your assurance. I am your peace. I am one with you. I am. The Psalms especially focus on the infinite nature of divine mind. Psalms 8.1 says, O Lord, how majestic is your name in all the world. You've set your glory above the heavens. Psalms 57 says, you're exalted above the heavens. Let your glory be over all. So how do we step into that ever-expanding, glorious, infinite connection with divine mind? How do we expand from a thimble to a chalice? The key to expanding our consciousness is in Psalms 23. In our prosperity class that finishes up today, and kudos to those of you who have stuck it out. I'm really <laughs> proud of you for hanging in there with me and thankful too because I learn from every interaction in that class. I have learned from you, so thank you. We've been focused on Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I have everything I need. My cup is overflowing. Your goodness and mercy will be with me all the days of my life. That overflowing cup is overflowing for everyone, whether it is this sized or this sized or that sized. The overflowing cup overflows for all. No one is excluded from the beneficence and the beauty of God's love. No one is excluded. It flows into us and through us and spills out. The bigger the vessel, the more that can spill out to touch others. Like in that meditation, we're talking, you know, here we are, this peaceful bubble expanded, expanded, expanded. The bigger your mind and your connection to God grows, the more it spills out and the more good you experience and create in your life and in the lives of those that you touch. That is that idea of love loops that we've been talking about for the last month. We give to each other in our thoughts, our words, and our deeds, and we create an ever-expanding loop of goodness. You already know that when you give, you step into that universal flow. You join with divine mind, and divine mind is what gives you the return. You want more love? You give more love. You want more peace? You give more peace. You want financial abundance, you give from your financial abundance. You want to grow spiritually, you give where you're spiritually fed. It's an eternal and ever-expanding loop of love. And we're creating it here together in a spiritual community. Okay. So I want to give you a very practical way to put this into action. So anybody here have a difficult relationship or situation that needs healing? And you don't have to lift your hands. Because I know everybody does. I already know that. We all do. We all have difficult people or situations or things that we're facing that we need some healing. All of us. So you know that you have to give love to get love. Right? You know that you give love and divine flows back to you. You know that we give from our abundance to receive abundantly. We give healing to receive healing. We give forgiveness to receive forgiveness. We, we do that. It's the same in difficult relationships. You give love, forgiveness, and peace to a difficult person. And you can give from a distance. That's the cool thing. Because sometimes we step away from difficult relationships. We step away from difficult situations. And that's okay. We can still connect with divinity and give love. And give forgiveness and peace in difficult situations. So I'm going to tell you how this works. Have you ever been sitting around at work or doing something mundane, know, chopping veggies for soup or just sitting around and someone's, someone pops into your mind. Has that ever happened? Yeah, it's happened to everybody. That's a little divine spark right there. That's a little moment for you to go, I send you peace. That happened to me last night in a meditation. My mother-in-law from my first marriage, I haven't thought about her in like 20 years, uh, popped into my mind. And it's like, that. in that moment, I thought, I have a little bit of unforgiveness. And so I sent her peace. I have no idea where she is or what she's doing, but I saw her, and I sent her a little bit of peace. So anytime anyone pops into your mind, send them, uh, hey, I send you peace and blessings. 
Now, you could do that as an image. You could send somebody a rose in your mind. You could send somebody a lollipop. Ah. The, the idea is send them, send them the good. Okay. So decades ago, in the late 1960s, children, and I mean me, uh, I played a little game. And I played this game with empty, clean green bean cans and string. So uh, my little sister and I, we were very resourceful back on the farm. So we had these cans. And what you do is you poke a hole in the bottom of the can, you put a string through it, and you tie a knot to it. And you have as long as a string as mom would give us, which was, you know, clothesline, you know, really long string attached to these two tin cans. My little sister Shelly and I, we would take turns. One of us would go hide behind the chicken shed, and the other one would be on this end, and we would whisper our little secrets back and forth through our little tin can communicator. Did anybody else do that? Yeah. Did, okay. Yeah. Exactly. So, you know, we would, we would talk and whisper those little secrets, and I'm telling you, she was four, I was six, six the little secrets, little farm girls, I, it was silly. We just giggled a lot. But, but what I want you to understand is that with everyone that you know, have known, you have a little string of consciousness that's connecting you, right? A little string of consciousness. So when someone pops up in your mind, even if it's someone icky or mean or awful or someone that you have walked away from and you've got that judgment or that unforgiveness, even those people, you have that little string of consciousness that's connecting you, you can send them back down that string a little bit of peace, a little bit of forgiveness, a little bit of love, an image of a rose, an image of whatever you want, peace and happiness back to them. Even if you never see them again in this lifetime, even if they're not even on this plane of existence, you can still send them that peace through that connection. So this week, what I want you to do, if anybody pops up in your mind, do that, okay? Just... And it takes two seconds, okay? There you are. I send you peace. You can do this not just with people. You can do this with situations. If you have a difficult situation, a disease, a diagnosis, your car needs a tire, I don't know, uh, your bank account needs to be boosted, you can do that too. You can hold that in your mind and send it the, the thought of abundance. Send it the thought of peace. Send it the thought of healing. Take that time and send that thought to that situation, not just that person. Okay, so any idea, any thought, any difficulty that pops up in your mind this week, zap it. Zap it with kindness. Zap it with forgiveness and zap it with love. It's a simple action, but that simple action helps you grow your consciousness. And here at the church, I am the CCO. I am the Chief Consciousness Officer. My job here as the CCO is to help us go, oh, we're going to grow our consciousness, and we do it together. That's the cool thing. We do it together. It's simple and powerful, as often the most powerful things truly are so incredibly simple. In Freeman's poem, God Speaks to Us, divine mind is the cause we are the effect. We have the nature and the spirit of God. So we can speak to others in the same way, aligned with the heart of God. And so I say to you, remember, I am assurance. I am peace. I am oneness. I am the law that you can live by. I am the love that you can cling to. I am your assurance. I am your peace. I am one with you. I am. And so we expand from a thimble to a chalice. And so it is. Nikawa. Thank you for the miracle of love. Help us all so we may come to see. of a tree
the miracle of life. Help us all so we may come to see. Is connected like the roots and the branches of a tree. One more time. Thank you for the miracle of life. Help us all so we may come to see. branches of a tree. All love is connected like the roots and the branches of a tree. All love is connected like the roots and the branches of a tree. Oh, isn't that beautiful? All love is connected. This is a time in our service when we focus on our prayer box. And today, as we focus on our prayer box, we're going to be sending thoughts of peace down that wire to our friends who are traveling in Egypt. And we're going to send thoughts of peace to the people of Palestine, and the people of Israel and of the Gaza Strip. We are connected with all the people of the earth, all of us, and we can send them peace. So I want you to hold that part of the world in your heart and your mind as I share with you Pope Francis's prayer for peace. Lord God of peace, hear our prayer. We have tried so many times and over so many years to resolve our conflicts by our own powers and by the force of our arms. How many moments of hostility and darkness have we experienced? How much blood has been shed? How many lives have been shattered? How many hopes have been buried, but all our efforts have been in vain? Now, Lord, come to our aid. Grant us peace. Teach us peace. Guide our steps in the ways of peace. Open our eyes and our hearts and give us the courage to say, never again war. With war, everything is lost. Instill in our hearts the courage to take concrete steps to achieve peace. Lord, God of Abraham, God of the prophets, God of love, you created us and you call us to live as brothers and sisters. Give us the strength daily to be instruments of peace. Enable us to see everyone who crosses our path as our brother and sister. Make us sensitive to the plea of our citizens who entreat us to turn our weapons of war into implements of peace, our trepidation into confident trust, and are quarreling into forgiveness. Keep alive with us the flame of hope so that with patience and perseverance we may opt for dialogue and reconciliation. In this way, may peace triumph at last. And may the words division, hatred, and war be banished from the heart of every man and woman. Lord, diffuse the violence of our tongues and our hands. Renew our hearts and minds so that the word which always brings us together will be brother and our way of life will always be that of shalom, peace, salam. Amen. And everyone says amen. Amen. This is also, also the time in our service when we share our financial gifts. So will the ushers come forward? We want to acknowledge those who give online and those who give here in service with us. So as you hold that, that gift in your heart or in your hands, let's affirm together. Divine love as me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And so it is. Amen.
we give and we receive as a spiritual community. Let's pray together. Dear Father, Mother God, we join together in gratefully receiving offerings of love. We bless them. We see them multiplied as they go forth to accomplish our mission of touching and loving and changing lives. We know that spirit is the source of all we receive, all we do, and all we accomplish. Amen. So, I think we have kiddos. We do. Yeah. Ah. Y'all ready? Let's sing it. Jessica, what did you guys do today? Today we finished our uh, curriculum. Sorry, the word escaped me for a minute. <laughs> and um, we practiced looking for God everywhere, not only around us, but within us. And um, we worked again on our prayer protection. And we had a really cool meditation. Yay. I'm glad to hear that. You guys ready to bless our children? Yes, Let's do this. We love you, we bless you, we appreciate you, and we behold the Christ in you. God loves you, and we love you just the way you are. Okay. To receive our blessing from the kids. Yay, thank you. Why don't we stand up and we're all going to sing our peace song together. Are we ready? Let's join together in our prayer for protection. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. This week, may you awaken fully to the love that is in you and around you. Get out there, build those bubbles of love, send peace to everyone that you meet. Speak peace to all. And so it is. I love you guys. See you next week. Mm -hmm.